Okay, so now in this lecture, we're going to discuss uh, the general elution problem as applied to uh, liquid chromatography. Uh, so please remember that solutes separate out uh, according to their relative uh, polarity, primarily as the separating force or the distinction between compounds in liquid chromatography, um, where like dissolves like, or polar compounds will absorb to or partition into a polar stationary phase, whereas nonpolar compounds would be more soluble or would prefer to interact with a nonpolar mobile phase or vice versa. Um, in gas chromatography, polarity is a much less important factor um, in terms of sticking to the stationary phase and the primarily or the primary component uh, that is going to be used to separate out solutes in gas chromatography um, is boiling point or the volatility of compounds. And boiling point or volatility will allow us to think back to general chemistry, um, to ideas of intermolecular force strength, etc. cetera. Um, we'll do that a bit later. Um, a secondary factor that's less important is polarity. So the polarity does factor into the intermolecular force strength, uh, but it has less to do uh, with whether the stationary phase interacts with the gas favorably or not. So let's focus first um, on LC, right, where we have a liquid mobile phase. This liquid mobile phase could be polar or nonpolar. And in this setup, the stationary phase will be opposite in polarity relative to the mobile phase. If the mobile phase is very polar, then the stationary phase is nonpolar, et cetera. So the eluent, also known as the mobile phase, this is going to be responsible for dragging solutes through the column. And if solutes are more soluble in the mobile phase, they will come out of the column at earlier retention times. The eluent strength refers to how strong the mobile phase is, okay? Or a strong eluent is one that is able to take the molecules and pull them off of the stationary phase and bring them through the column. So a strong eluent elutes solutes by pulling them off of the stationary phase. So there are two modes of LC, normal phased LC and reverse phase LC. This table is going to help us to uh, sort of organize our thoughts about the relative polarities of mobile and stationary phase in each of these LC setups. So all that you have to remember is really one of these parts of the table and you can infer the rest from that. Just remember that normal LC means a nonpolar mobile phase, or at least a mobile phase that is originally, um, or starts out nonpolar and much less polar than the stationary phase, which is normally something like silica or alumina in adsorption chromatography. Um, so let me put that here in this. So a strong eluent is one that is going to take the molecules that are sticking to the polar stationary phase and pull them off of the stationary phase. 
So polar molecules stick to the polar stationary phase. So you need to have a strong eluent, which is a more polar mobile phase later in the separation to cause those polar solutes to be willing to hop back into the mobile phase and elute from the column. Okay, so now we can see that a strong eluent is when we make the mobile phase gradually more like the stationary phase, more polar. So a mobile phase that is similar to the stationary phase polarity is a strong eluent. A weak eluent would be a nonpolar mobile phase, which is not going to favorably um, solubilize or dissolve any solutes that are adhering to the polar stationary phase, because polar molecules or polar solutes are what's going to stick to the stationary phase. So in reverse phase, this is just the opposite. Now we have originally a very polar mobile phase. We have a nonpolar stationary phase, okay? Usually you modify the silica um, with some other substance to make it much less polar. And then, uh, or you could also have some sort of liquid film uh, that is hydrocarbon based. Um, so I'll just put generic hydrocarbon here, CNHM, those compounds and films of stationary phase are very nonpolar. Uh, so this time, nonpolar molecules stick to the stationary phase for long periods of time. So if we want to elute those nonpolar molecules from the column, then we need to make the mobile phase more nonpolar as the separation goes on. So a strong eluent in a reverse setup is a mobile phase that is decreasing in polarity or becomes more nonpolar, once again, like the stationary phase is. And a weak eluent would be the opposite. So in an isocratic elution, this means that the mobile phase composition is constant. Or it's not changing in polarity. And the general elution problem um, is going to arise from an isocratic elution. So let's consider the following. Let's say this is a normal LC experiment, right, where we have a polar stationary phase. So on your chromatogram, you'll have the first peak, which is the mobile phase, okay? The mobile phase is very nonpolar originally. And then we might have compound A come out first, and then there's a long time before compounds B and C elute. So in the isocratic elution, Right, because the mobile phase is a constant composition. The very polar molecules, uh, B and C, which stick to the stationary phase for a long time, are reluctant to elute from the column. So C here is the most polar, or comes out of the latest retention time. And we do have a good separation between A, B, and C. So that goal is obtained. But what we don't want is this large sort of inefficient time gap where you have to wait in between the elution of compound A, the nonpolar one, and compound B and C, the more polar ones. So the general elution problem is when you use a single mobile phase that's not necessarily strong at eluding compounds, okay, the most polar ones 
these are going to stick for a long time. And so you have to wait for them to elute from the column. And sometimes they might not ever elute. So the isocratic elution is not the way uh, to do liquid chromatography in the efficient sense. The way to address the general elution problem is by doing a gradient elution. So a gradient elution now means we gradually increase the eluent strength or the mobile phase strength. And remember that we need to increasingly make the mobile phase more and more similar to the stationary phase. as the separation proceeds. So once again, our mobile phase time is the first peak, okay? If this is a normal LC setup again, then we have a polar stationary phase and nonpolar molecule A comes out first. So what you will do now is you're going to increase the polarity of the mobile phase to make it go from nonpolar, okay, which was the original composition, and you'll mix in some other solvent to make it more polar after compound A elutes. And then that will cause compound B to come out earlier in time. After compound B elutes, then you will increase that mobile phase polarity again, gradually mixing in a more polar solvent and compound C will come out next. So this is more efficient. We don't have to wait as long for all the compounds to actually um, elute and they're still pretty well separated. We have good resolution between the peaks. So in a gradient elution, we gradually make the mobile phase more and more like this most retained or most polar compound. If you make the mobile phase more and more polar, then compound C is willing to jump off of the polar stationary phase, get back into a mo polar mobile phase and elute from the column. Okay, so overall, in normal LC, the mobile phase is originally nonpolar. And these terms are relative, but it's much less polar than the um, stationary phase. For example, you could have 100% hexanes. And then what we're going to do during the gradient elution is gradually mix in more polar solvents. Okay, for example, maybe we'll go from 100% hexane to 50% hexane and 50% of a more polar compound like acetonitrile. We'll discuss all those specific solvents in a minute. Okay. And that will increase the eluent strength and decrease the retention time of those strongly retained compounds. So in reverse LC, right, now the mobile phase originates is a polar substance. For example, it could be 100% water. And this time now the nonpolar molecules are what stick to the nonpolar stationary phase. So this time we're going to gradually mix in less polar solvents as the separation proceeds and as compounds begin to elute from the column. 
So maybe now you change it from 100% water to 50% um, water and 50% of something else like THF. And that will cause the eluent strength to increase and the retention times to decrease. So the goal is always to start pulling these compounds out of the column by making the mobile phase more and more similar to the stationary phase, but to do so um, at a rate that still preserves high resolution. So in order of decreasing polarity, I'm going to give you uh, some examples of common LC uh, mobile phases or solvents that we mix together and create these gradient elution solvent systems. So water, uh, by far, is the most polar. That's more polar than methanol, which has hydrogen bonding capability like water. Ethanol is a two-carbon alcohol and has more CC and CH bonds, and so it's less polar. And then acetonitrile um, actually has quite a high dielectric moment or dielectric value, um, but it has no hydrogen bonding OH group. And then after that, we have ethers like THF and then hexane. Hexane is a hydrocarbon, C6, right, H14, entirely nonpolar. So we're going to do a few problems here where we talk about strong eluents in various chromatography types. And these solvent systems will be made up of mixtures of these different pure solvents. So if you have a, a strong eluent that you're asked to identify in LSC, LSC, right, means you have a liquid mobile phase, a solid stationary phase, and generally that means you have silica or alumina stationary phase, which are both incredibly polar. So a strong eluent, once again, is a mobile phase that is increasing in polarity so that it will pull the polar molecules off of the polar stationary phase and elute them earlier in retention time. So if you look at these solvents, um, the most polar one we said was water. So you want to select that one in the highest percentage. And we also have methanol, which is the second most polar. So the strongest one here is the most polar solvent, which has the highest composition of water. And the other part is a highly polar, still hydrogen bonding protic solvent. So another question. Now we're selecting the weakest eluent in normal LC, right? Normal LC means the stationary phase is still polar. And the mobile phase originally is nonpolar. A strong eluent is one that is like the stationary phase. That would be a polar mobile phase. But here we want a weak eluent or a nonpolar mobile phase. So we want to select the most nonpolar of these. And we saw that ethers like THF, okay, this has a five membered ring with a hydrogen tetrahydrofuran um, with an internal oxygen, I mean. Uh, that's pretty much nonpolar, but hexane is truly nonpolar. We want to look for some solvent system containing those two or just hexane. Um, and it looks like here we have 75% THF and 25% hexane. So that would be the least polar of these options, and therefore the weakest eluent in normal LC.
So this is an example of what the mobile phase might originate as. And then as the separation goes on, you would increase the polarity uh, by making it such something such as option D, where you have some methanol now, it's hydrogen bonding. So then selecting the strongest eluent in reverse phase, reverse phase now means the stationary phase is nonpolar. So a strong eluent, right, means a mobile phase that is becoming less polar. So that it's similar to the stationary phase. So we're looking for uh, the least polar of these. And uh, once again, that mixture of hydrocarbon hexane and ether THF uh, will be the least polar. One more issue uh, that you might be asked about is which combination of solvents um, is not viable due to immiscibility. So, Compounds or solvents that are opposite polarities do not mix because they cannot make favorable intermolecular forces. So you'll only be asked to predict this if it's sort of an extreme and obvious example, but looking at the solvents we saw above where water was way more polar than methanol, which was more polar than ethanol, more polar than acetonitrile, and then THF, and then hexane. If we try to mix water, extremely polar, with hexane, very nonpolar, then those two will not even mix, okay? or those are immiscible, such as when we talked about doing liquid-liquid extractions with two substances, an aqueous and an organic layer. So immiscibility is a problem and you cannot just mix any two solvents together. They have to be similar enough to one another to be willing to mix and create some homogeneous solution. So for more practice with LC and the gradient elution problem and solvent systems, you can check out uh, unit two of my analytical course guide at chemguides.com.